Alright guys, so welcome back to the video on the channel. In this episode, we have the episode you guys have all been waiting for. So, obviously, as you guys already know, this is the OnePlus Nord. I am filmed with it right now, so if you like the video quality, then you know the video quality is good. But, so, uh, this is the OnePlus Nord. This is uh, the episode you guys have all been waiting for and asking for. So, uh, today I'm going to go over some of the things that I like and dislike about the OnePlus Nord. As well as other categories like battery, performance, uh, display and all that kind of stuff. And uh, cameras and things like that. So, yeah, without further ado... Let's get right to the video. Design you get on the Wobble Snored, you get a blue marble back, and you can also get it in grey onyx. But everyone knows that the blue marble color is specifically nice, so yeah, you get the blue marble color, and you also get uh, the Wobble logo with the quad camera array, which I'll go more into in camera in the camera section. And you also get a flash, a single flash right next to the camera, and also the Wobble uh, like lettered logo near to the back of the phone. Um, to the bottom of the phone so switch around uh, on the front you also get a dual selfie punch hole camera and uh, really thin bezels I'm actually really surprised just how thin the bezels were on this I'm actually yeah I'm quite astounded um, a lot slimmer than something like the iPhone 11 Pro Max which is pretty good cons uh, considering that that phone is like 700 UK pound more expensive you also get the notification slider honestly please other phone companies please include that on your phone it, it's such a such a good experience and um when you're just sliding it around it feels so good but also on that right side you also get the power button and on the bottom you get a sim card tray and you also get the USB-C port and the mono speaker which there is not two of there's only one so that is a pretty annoying point about the OnePlus Nord the speakers are all right but they're nothing really special also on the left side of the phone you get just the volume uh, volume rocket and that's it so nothing really much on that side and then on the top you get the microphone uh, this is also using the microphone from the OnePlus Nord I'm just uh, bumping up the volume levels in post. If you guys like the microphone, uh, then let me know in the description. And so that's pretty much the design of the OnePlus Nord. Not really that much to talk about because the design of the phone is kind of personal preference. So, but I personally really love the design. The front selfie punch hole doesn't really get in my way, to be honest. And that blue marble back is seriously amazing. And to be honest, it's the nicest colour of grey I've ever seen on a phone. Uh, the grey onyx colour as well. So, moving on now, we're going to move on to display. Alright guys, so let's talk about the display now. The OnePlus Nord has a 6.4 inch 90 hertz uh, fluid AMOLED display. So, let's point that in actual English. This is actually a really buttery smooth display. Uh, a mix with uh, so Oxygen OS, which I'll move on to in the software section. Uh, it's honestly just a, such a good experience flying around the um, OS, and it just the animations feel really smooth with the 90 hertz. So, if you guys don't know what 90 hertz is, it's basically so regular phones have 60 hertz. Most phones from last year had 60 hertz panels. So that is basically the re screen refreshes 60 times per second, and when it's bumped up to 90 hertz, that's a, a 0 0.5 times increase. Um, so you, basically what happens is uh, it just refreshes the extra 30 times extra per second and it actually adds quite a lot onto animations and it just looks really smooth so yeah i really enjoy the 90 hertz amoled display on this and amoled if you guys didn't know is where so you get more inky blacks and like like just better contrast ratios so colors tend to pop more and yeah it's just an overall better viewing experience than lcd which tends to have like ghosted effects and stuff like that and it just doesn't look amazing so we've got the Wobble Snort 90Hz AMOLED display which is actually really quite impressive for the price um there are uh, there are other phones that have the exact same panel you know it's not exactly special but I think for the price you're actually getting quite a good value in that uh, 90Hz AMOLED display and the 6.4 inch size just makes it overall very easy to hold I think 6.4 inch is actually quite the perfect size at the minute because a lot of people don't like really like big phones like the Note 20 Ultra with a 6.9 inch display that is just maybe a bit too big um, but I personally I quite like big screens and I think this is quite a good sweet spot if you want a big screen but you don't want it to be like cumbersome or anything like that so I'm quite impressed by the display of the OnePlus Nord so uh, yeah we'll move on now to performance alright guys so in the performance section <laughs> Right guys, so in the performance section we uh, get a Snapdragon 765, I mean, you've got to be snapping them dragons, you know, it'd just be like that. <laughs> yeah guys, you don't need any explanation for Snapdragon, they are like the biggest um, 
manufacturer of chips in the world, uh, so including for Apple. So yeah, so they have developed the Snapdragon 76 5G, which is a 5G uh, compatible chip that has the 5G modem inside of the chip. So you get 5G performance with the Mobile Snort. I do think it's not millimeter wave, so it's only like the sub band 5G, but it's still 5G nonetheless, and you get pretty reliable speeds. But so it's it's pretty decent for future proofing, but most of the places right now haven't got that. And if you're a techie, you probably change your phone every like year or so. So I, I get to change my phone every month, so that's pretty cool. As someone who like knows that a lot of people can't change the phone that much, the future proofing on 5G is actually really impressive. So yeah, so we got 5G on board, and we also get the decent performance. This is uh, kind of similar to a Snapdragon 845, which is. Not last year's, but the years before chips, best chip in the world. So, apart from Apple's A12 chip uh, at the time, so you get actually some pretty decent performance. It's great for uh, PUBG. Like I know a lot of people say it's not really good for 3D gaming. It is. I'm sorry, but it just is. It's not incredible for it. So it's not like I reviewed the Realme X2 Pro last month, which had an 855 Plus. That was a really good chip for gaming. Um, the GPU and CPU were actually re worked really well together and the were able to play PUBG on really high graphics. It did get really hot though, especially because it's glass and it conducts better. Yeah guys, so the Snapdragon 76 5G is not a chip to be underestimated. It can play pretty much everything on like medium settings without like a hurry. And um, I think it can manage most games on high settings. So yeah, you know, it's actually really excellent for day-to-day -day usage, like scrolling through Twitter or Instagram or whatever. And also like like games like Alto's Odyssey and other uh, Alto's Adventures and stuff like that. And it really only bottlenecks when you come to like uh, PUBG on high graphical settings and COD Mobile. So if you're not playing them games, do not worry. This phone actually flies through its OS, Oxygen OS, especially because it's very well optimized on Oxygen OS. So performance is really not a um, problem on the OnePlus Nord. And because of the opt optimizations Oxygen OS has made, it just flies. So I do think performance is nothing to worry about on the Nord. And you also get the 5G future proofing. So if you're on into that, uh, I'll leave like a link where you can buy the Nord in the description, uh, just so you guys can get your hands on it. We all love phones, so. All right guys, so I've been talking about it quite a lot. And so I'm gonna move on to the next category, which is software. So I've been saying Oxygen OS is pretty optimized and it's very well, it's very well optimized. It's one of the lightest software skins. Plus it just feels absolutely snappy. I actually think this feels like the most um, refined phone, even though OnePlus were released a trailer where it said that they've only had six months to create the phone, which most companies spend about a year or so on creating a phone. Spent six months and I do think the software feels significantly better than some phones that have spent a year to be worked on. I just don't know, I, I feel like the OnePlus Nord has just done an absolute bang up job on the software. Uh, Oxygen OS is just absolutely creamy and especially with that 90Hz fluid AMOLED display we get some really nice animations and it's just that they put all the effort they can into the software. It really goes to show the experience is just on another level included better than stock android in my opinion and it's android 10 as you'd come to expect with i think two years of promised software updates from oneplus and you can pretty much guarantee that they're going to give that because oneplus is very reputable um, only behind google for android update i do think it's a very impressive piece of software so if you guys could get your hands on a oneplus device test it out let me go let me that let me guys know what you guys think of Oxygen OS in the comment section below, but uh, moving on now, we're going to move on to battery. Alright guys, so talking about battery, the OnePlus Nord has a 4000 mAh battery, so that is a pretty decent size of battery. Uh, it's better than most phones at the price, especially like the Pixel 4a, which I, I has somewhere in the 3000s, I can't remember exactly. But that's got around a 3300 mAh battery, if I can remember correctly. Uh, so yeah, this uh, Wobble Sword has 700 extra million powers on that battery, and I do think it's um, a pretty pretty uh, good battery life. Some phones do have uh, better for the price, but I am averaging around, I'd say, I don't actually know the exact numbers, but I will pop up a screenshot at the minute right now, so of like my screen usage over the past couple of days, and I am a very heavy user of my phone. Uh, I scroll through Twitter, I shoot 4K video a lot. This is my only camera that I shoot 4K video on, so uh, it gets used for that quite a lot. It's recording this entire video. And yeah, so the battery, I, I actually really, really, I mean, 
quite impressed <laughs> to be honest uh, it was much better than uh, the real mech super that i reviewed before it get an extra like two hours on that so i think it gives me around a six or seven hour um screen on time so i might have to check on that but i'm really impressed with what the oneplus nord's battery uh, percentage over time has been and also standby time i can leave this off charge just sat next to my bed for an entire night and it only dropped like seven percent which is pretty impressive that's kind of iphone level i think um and i just it outlasts my ipad a lot my ipad actually has a 10,000 milliamp power battery sure it has to push a 12.9 inch display but it's at 120 hertz but it still outlasts the ipad pro 2017 um and you know it's a very very good uh, battery on the oneplus nord but speaking of battery we also get the warp charge 30t which is oneplus's fastest charging solution it gets it zero to 100 in 50 51 minutes i believe it was uh, so 51 minutes zero to 100 uh, it's not half bad uh, my really actually pro as i say i keep saying that but it's it's basically it's made competitor i i think um but a lot of people don't know the brand so they probably won't buy it but yeah that did zero to 100 in 25 minutes so that was pretty impressive but i think still for the price this is amazing the iphone se has a five watt charger and that's just horrid i mean apple I, you might as well ditch the charger because it's so bad so i'm quite impressed with the oneplus nord battery life and uh, battery in general with the fast charging so yeah guys um now we'll move on to the final category which is cameras all right guys so the camera on the oneplus nord is the final category we've got to talk about so i was actually really surprised with the oneplus nord's camera it's only using a 48 megapixel sony imx 586 sensor which is a kind of meh sensor from last year that was like used in a lot of budget phones and still is used in a lot of budget phones but they uh, i think oneplus actually used that sensor in the oneplus 8 so that they could market the oneplus nord better uh, because the oneplus 8 was used in the imx 586 which is a usually quite a mid-range budget sensor um but yeah so oneplus actually used that camera in there just so they can mark it up the nord as a flagship camera because the oneplus 8 is counted as a flagship uh, phone so you guys can easily see that the oneplus has put in quite a lot of effort into just refining the cameras and the software and like software updates and stuff like that so the cameras because i did a camera test it was in very well lit situations and very um also hdr situations and cave situations so you don't really get much better night mode than that i'll leave that link right here and i actually really enjoyed some of the pictures uh, it's taking some of the video it has ois which a load of phones don't have at this price range it's actually quite a good feature so if you take a lot of uh, videos on the back camera like say if you're a parent and you're videoing your child and you've got to follow him this is actually quite a good feature because it keeps it really stabilized and not shaky and all that so i think it's very impressive for the price that it has ois and you also get an 8 megapixel ultra wide which surprisingly captures quite a bit of detail uh, compared to other ultra wides at the same price because uh usually 8 megapixel ultra wides are very unsharp and just don't look very good at all and also get a 2 megapixel macro and 2 megapixel depth sensor so depth sensors help with portraits but people say they don't so i don't know at this point <laughs> and then you also get a macro sensor which are pretty much useless they might as well have just combined them into uh the main sensor just maybe upgraded to the imx 686 from this year uh but you know oneplus didn't want to do that they wanted to mark it as a flagship, flagship camera and didn't want to really out outplay the oneplus 8 regular uh, so i can see why they did that and i do really think the oneplus nord's cameras are really impressive 4k 30 on the back camera which is what i'm recording this with and also 4k 60 on the front i don't know why they chose that 4k 60 on the front is very strange when you don't have 4k 30 when you don't have 4k 60 on the back but either way oneplus done a bang up job on the cameras here and now we're going to go over to my conclusion all right guys so the oneplus nord very good i do think when um when this goes down in price this will be one of the best deals you could actually pick up on a smartphone yeah they're all better for the price i'd say like in terms of specs but this truly does feel refined and they're all better specs for the price but you know they're not really most people won't know the companies like realme uh xiaomi they won't really trust them i uh, know a lot of uh, us guys don't really like buying from the chinese suppliers even though oneplus is chinese i think um I might have to check up on that but they are sub brand of bbk electronics which is a chinese company uh, so be aware of that into go buying this but 
honestly, I really don't mind about buying something from China. iPhone SE, I have to say, this is significantly better than, please don't buy the iPhone SE when you can buy this. I'm sorry, I know I hate, I'm hating on the iPhone SE, but the value proposition of the Nord is significantly better. Less like a gamer or something, but this has, has a better display, uh, so the A13 doesn't really matter to me. I'd rather have a bigger and better display uh, than like an extra bit of processing power. So yeah, I'm really impressed with the OnePlus Nord from the presentation to the cameras to the battery performance and design, design especially, because that is one snazzy looking back. Also that, that colour, that colour though. Yeah guys, so I'm very, very impressed with the OnePlus Nord. Uh, it definitely feels the most refined phone I've ever used. And to be honest, if I had to pick any phone that I've used to daily drive, it would be the OnePlus Nord, uh, just because of that software. Oxygen OS is seriously amazing, and I can see OnePlus returning back to the root, offered a flagship experience for the price. And I do think this is the phone for techies and average consumers alike, and I think everyone have a really good time using this phone, unless you're in the US. The best phone that you can't buy in the US. Uh, so yeah, this is not available in the US, which is a huge downfall of the OnePlus Nord. I really do think they could have got so many sales in the in the US. It would have been just such a like a really good. Even if they hiked up the price by like maybe fifty U, you know, US dollars, I do think this would have sold like in stupid amounts. But they didn't so this is only available in europe if you guys want to buy it i'll leave a link in the description so yeah i'm just gonna find try to find the best deal for you guys it will be a uk link so if it doesn't work in your country i'm very sorry uh, i could probably find try and find one for you but i'm not sure so yeah this is the been the wobble snort this has been tech r us hope you guys enjoyed and uh stay safe stay healthy and stay techie and i'll see you next one